This is the Tesla Model S, and just like my mobile phone, it's powered by a lithium-ion battery. It's just that the batteries in that car can hold about 7,000 times the charge that my mobile phone can, and as a result, it's really, really powerful. In fact, this thing has the performance of a supercar, and I'll illustrate that later with some performance tests in the video, but obviously, this is actually designed as a practical family car. So, if you climb inside the back, you will see well, for me, an average size adult, I've got plenty of knee room. I mean, look at that. And headroom, that's just about okay. The sloping roof line does mean that people over six foot will find it a little bit cramped for headspace. Another thing to note with this car is that the floor is quite high because there's all the batteries underneath. And as a result, this angle between your knees and your hips is a little bit less comfortable than in some other cars where you sit a bit higher. On the plus side though, this flat bench seat and the flat floor means that for carrying three, the person in the middle can get quite comfortable. It's just that the people on the outer two seats then end up having their heads just like wedged up against this sloping roof line here. Now, if you click up there to watch my detailed practicality video, you'll see exactly what it's like with three people in the back. And I'll also show you how much stuff you can fit in this car's boot, but I'll give you a summary now. So the luggage capacity on this Tesla is actually pretty impressive. Just wait for the electronic tailgate to do its thing. And voila. As you can see, plenty of space. There is a bit of a load lip to lift stuff over, but it's not too much of a problem. If you want to carry even more stuff, you know, this is a practical hatchback, people. Look, you can fold down the seats, though. There is a bit of a ridge there, which does make it a bit harder when pushing heavy items to the front of the car. But once again, like I say, it's no big deal. Now, you can actually get this car with a really cool feature. So this one has underfloor storage, but you can actually get little seats which flip out of there. Let me just move that out of the way. And then, there are occasional seats for children who can sit here and they're like strapped in and everything. The only problem is that they do have to be small children. As I'll illustrate now that look, that's, that's yeah, it's shut on my head there, you see. So they do have to be pretty tiny kids. Anyway, that's still impressive though, because actually, believe it or not, under there is the electric motor which powers the rear wheels. So it has 510 horsepower, which is getting on for what you get from a 5.2 litre V10 in an Audi R8. And it's small, it's about, it's about the same size as that bucket. And this is the D model, so it's got another motor at the front of the car. And if you walk around to the front, you'll notice that under here, you have some more storage. Actually, the front on rear drive versions of the Tesla Model S is slightly larger because this one, being the four-wheel drive, has another motor just under here, though it's actually only about that big and yet it still has 261 horsepower, which is about the same as you get from a two litre turbocharged petrol engine in a VW Golf Club Sport. Now, when you combine both motors together and the battery capacity, you end up with a 611 horsepower car. Now, I know the numbers don't actually add up because the power is actually dictated by the battery rather than the total combination of the two motors together. But still, 611 horsepower, that is insane. What's also insane is the price. So, yeah, this car, it's, well, it's £130,000, though the entry-level Model S starts from around £60,000, and it's a lot better value. Now, that brings us on to the interior of this car and the quality. So, for a £60,000 car, I think it's easily good enough, but for this P100D at £130,000, yeah, I mean, it's nice, but the fit and finish doesn't fill £130,000. I think that something like a BMW 7 Series does feel nicer, posher, and better made inside. I mean, this one, for instance, has, well, the Tesla uses switch gear from Mercedes. This gear selector, you'll find that in a Mercedes A-Class. What is good, though, is the design. I mean, it's very minimalistic. There's hardly any buttons, and that's because you control most of the car's functions through this amazing portrait star screen. I mean, there's nothing else like this in the automotive world. It's incredible. I could say it's like an iPad, but it's better than an iPad. It's absolutely blooming massive. So you've got full internet connectivity. So I've got Google Maps with all the traffic data and stuff like that. I've got Spotify. I've got, I've got the internet. Look, I mean, I can go online if I want to. There we go. We're on car wear there. I can search for some new cars. Brilliant, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Also, I can control all the car's functions through this as well, such as the suspension and things like the sunroof. So here we go, I can slide this dial here and open the sunroof to whatever percentage I want. There we go, I've gone for 88%. I mean, that is incredible. Now, there's so much to talk about this infotainment system here that I can't cover it in this review. So if you click up there, you can watch my detailed infotainment video on this particular system, and believe me, 
it's quite a long video, but it's worth it. So far then, the Tesla Model S is both practical and packed full of gadgets, but it isn't until you hit the road that it really blows you away. Now, anyone who thinks that electric cars are slow has never been in a Tesla Model S. This one has over 600 horsepower, and I can put it in a mode called Ludicrous, and if I press and hold the button, it gives me this car's maximum performance. And it's gonna ask me a little question in a second. Wait for it to pop up on the screen. Are you sure you want to push the limits? This will cause accelerated wear of the motor, gearbox and battery. No, I want my mummy or yes, bring it on. I'm gonna put the car in drive. I've got my left foot on the brake. I'm gonna mash the throttle. It's giving me launch mode. I'm now gonna do the same again and release the brake, go. <laughs> wow, that is really, really fast. So, <laughs> yeah, 0 to 60, Tesla claims around 2.5 seconds. I mean, this is the high performance version, but even lesser models, the Tesla Model S, feel very quick when you accelerate. That's because you have instant torque from that electric motor. Now, launching a car is all well and good for a bit of fun, but what's more useful every day is this thing's overtaking ability. So let's say I'm cruising along at 50 miles an hour and I'm stuck behind someone dawdling in a Porsche Panamera Turbo. I don't want to get past them. So yes, here we are, very, very sedate. It's 50 miles an hour and then I'm going to floor the throttle. Now, that's 70. That is 70. Like, oh, so, so fast. My God, this is insane. <laughs> yes, this makes you king of the road. You can just like warp speed past anything like you're in a spacecraft. <laughs> Love it. There can be no denying that this car's performance is incredible. The only problem is if you use it too much, you're going to be draining the battery pretty quickly because it's a bit like having your mobile phone running 4G data services and loads of apps. It just rinses out your charge. So this P100D has the largest battery you can get on a Tesla and its range is supposed to be up to 381 miles. But really, in the real world, you're going to be looking at between 200 and 250 miles and that's with fairly sedate driving. Now, of course, you can charge the car up and you want to go to one of Tesla's superchargers and they can recharge the batteries to 80% full in just 45 minutes, though there's only 34 of them in the country. So you might have to use some other charging method, which isn't as quick. And let's be honest, anyway, 45 minutes waiting for your car to charge is a lot longer than just filling it up with petrol. What I can't complain about, though, is the fact that well, by not having a petrol or a diesel engine, it's so serene when you're just cruising around this car because it's near silent. The only thing is though, when you speed up, because you haven't got that rattle of a normal engine, your ears then focus on other sounds and you pick up more wind whistle and tire roar. In fact, there's quite a lot of tire noise in this car because the tires are quite large. Another thing about it is that it's a heavy car, there's loads of batteries in it, so it does weigh it down, but it still handles pretty well. So there's loads of grip, especially from this four wheel drive version. And because the batteries are mounted low in the car, the center of gravity is good, so it doesn't roll about in the corners. The steering's sharp as well, but it doesn't have much feel to it. But then this isn't supposed to be a sports car, is it really? It just has the performance of one. And finally, that brings me on to the visibility. So. A lot of these cars are used in town and it's a big old thing to navigate around tiny city streets and it's not helped by the fact that you've got this huge pillar here which creates a big blind spot and the back window it's well it's quite hard to see out of and you can see for yourself by clicking up there to join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video. On the whole the Tesla Model S is a very nice car to drive and it's relaxing too thanks to its comfortable suspension. However, it does have some annoying features. If you charge a car using a normal three pin socket, then it'll only add 22 miles of range for every hour charged. So yeah, so it means it travels at 22 miles an hour, which isn't particularly quick. While there's some cubby spaces between the front seats and you've got a glove box, there are no door bins anywhere in the car. You can't get the car with a spare wheel, so if you get a puncher, you either have to use tire repair kit or just call the breakdown services. The big screen with internet access can be a little bit distracting while you're driving. I wonder if three will work there. Let's go for do there. I don't really know how to play Sudoku. Ah, unlike many big cars such as this, the Tesla Model S doesn't have a ski hat in between the two rear seats. Thankfully, there's still plenty to like about the Model S that more than make up for this. If you have the key in the car, the door handles automatically pop out for you. Just like car wow videos, there's little Easter eggs in the car. For instance, if I press and hold the Tesla button, wait for it to flash, and then I input 
my access code as 007, it will then change the car to the submarine Lotus and the Spire Love Me. Well, of course. If you raise the air suspension to get over a big bump, the car remembers where that is and will automatically do it for you the next time you're in the same location. The Advanced Cruise Control Autopilot system will automatically brake, accelerate and steer the car to keep it in lane when you're driving on the motorway. Now if you click up there you can get more information and compare offers on new cars at carwire.co.uk. So then overall my verdict on the Tesla Model S, should you avoid it, should you consider it, should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well if an electric car doesn't suit your lifestyle, just avoid it, it's going to be pointless. But if it does and you can afford it, just go right ahead and buy the Model S. There is nothing else like it and it'll even lock itself when you walk away. It's brilliant. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it and share it and comment. And if you click up there, you can subscribe to our channel. If you click there, you can watch my 360 degree passenger drive video on the Tesla. If you click down there, you can watch my detailed infotainment video review of it. And if you click up there, you can watch our detailed practicality video review of it. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in the video? Well, it was Mr. Tesla hidden away somewhere. Now, did you find it? If not, go back and check.